Good morning, John. Welcome back to Bizarre Beasts Season Zero. Hank and I are trading off hosting duties on our year-long journey to remaster the original Bizarre Beasts episodes from Vlogbrothers with corrections, updates, and new facts. Make sure you stick around for the pin set announcement. You know how caterpillars become butterflies? Well, that is a lie. Any given caterpillar you spot hunking its way down the sidewalk, there's a 90% chance that that fresh little wiggler is incapable of becoming a butterfly. And instead, it will become a moth. And John, moths. Oh my God, they're so good. What precisely is a moth? You ask? Well, here's where it gets a little bit messed up because butterflies are a thing. They're like all, they have a single common ancestor. Moths are just anything that's not a butterfly. Any scale winged thing that isn't a butterfly, moth. Is it more closely related to some butterflies than it is to some moths? Doesn't matter, moth. And talk about a branding problem, right? Butterfly is this beautiful word. It spoonerizes to flutter by. And then moth, sounds like the noise you make when a moth flies into your mouth. But moths, 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 moths. We're stuck with the name. Let's just look at these beautiful creatures. And the one I want to talk to you about today is mostly the regal moth. Why? Because of its caterpillar, the hickory horned devil, which looks like this. And bonus fact, this chunky green look is actually the fifth instar or development stage of this caterpillar's life. The earlier instars tend to be mostly black, with the later instars being more orangish or brownish. At these stages, the young caterpillars are spinier, and the spines on their backs branch more than the spines in their final hickory horn devil instar. You will never forget this caterpillar, or probably its name, because it has got brand power, brand too strong. Now there are other horned devils out there. This is the largest of the horned devils. It's from South America, but the hickory with its blue body and its red horns, why does it look this way? Well, because it's basically a hot dog with legs, it's very good eating. It looks fierce, but it's not. It can't sting, it can't bite, it's not venomous, it's not poisonous, but it's too big to hide from raccoons and possums. So it's gotta make those fuzzy folk worry about their nosies and toesies before grabbing on and taking a bite. But lots of caterpillars don't become gigantic food bags. In fact, the hickory horned devil is the largest caterpillar in the US. So why is it so big? Because the hickory horned devil has to consume massive amounts of food because Saturnian moths, which is this one of, it's like over a thousand species of these guys, do not have mouths once they become moths. Once a Saturnian caterpillar pupates, it will never eat again. And so these caterpillars eat two to three times their own body weight in leaves every day, growing in size over a thousand times in the course of a month. They don't even digest the cellulose of these plants. Instead, they basically juice the leaves in their guts. Just wanted to pause here and say we couldn't confirm the size change or the leaf juicing thing when the show's fact checker went back through this script. If you know where those facts came from, please let us know in the comments. Time for another bonus fact. Earlier, we showed footage of a pupa that looks like a big brown nut, but the footage didn't show where that pupa came from. Now, you might be familiar with the strangely beautiful chrysalises of butterflies or the silky cocoons spun by many moths around their pupae. But Hickory horned devils do things a little differently. Instead of attaching themselves to a twig or a leaf, these caterpillars burrow into the ground to pupate naked, rather than spinning a cocoon. When the males emerge from their chrysalis. They fly, sometimes for miles, trying to sniff out a female with their extremely sensitive feathery antenna. Their job is to locate the female because the female's job is to use all of its energy, creating hundreds of very large eggs. The female regal moth does not fly until it mates. And if it does not mate, it never flies. It just dies waiting. They have to mate and lay their eggs within the seven days they have to live in their adult forms. The so this is another spot where we couldn't find the source that Hank used for the last two lines when he originally made this video. What we did find was a reference that said that female regal moths have genuine difficulty even getting airborne, probably due to the weight of their eggs. So it's possible that they can fly, if not well or far. They may also live for more than seven days as adults maybe even up to two weeks, but most references just say about a week. 
The strategy of Regal Moths and other Saturniidae is that the moth phase exists only for meeting and breeding, and to pull that off, the caterpillar needs to be successful in storing fats and proteins before it pupates. And so, it has to get big and full of nutrients, which makes it a perfect snack, so it has to look ridiculously fierce. Pretty much anything would see this juicy boy and think that is not worth the risk, which is also how most people feel about them, even though they are completely harmless. Still, be nice, because they are a marvel. Even if they are a little terrifying. If you missed this critter the first time around, our Season Zero pin sets are now available. This set includes all 12 of the animals we began this Bizarre Beast journey with on Vlogbrothers, including the Hickory Horn Devil and the Regal Moth pins. The new versions are very glittery. To get the Season Zero pin set, visit BizarreBeastShow.com. If you enjoy learning on YouTube, why not get credit for it? With Study Hall, you can take college courses that start on YouTube for only $25. Here's how it works. Watch the course content made by ASU and Crash Course on YouTube for free, then sign up for an online college course led by ASU faculty and apply what you've learned for just $25. If at the end of the course, you're happy with the grade and want to add the college credit to your transcript, pay an optional $400 fee. That's about a third of the cost of a typical college course. Pick between common gen ed college courses like code and programming, human communication, modern world history, and more. Whether you're trying to learn new skills, earn college credit, or get experience taking a college course, Study Hall can help you reach your goals without risk. Check out the link in the description or go to gostudyhall.com to learn more.